We're here today with Nathan Foote with Health Services Expediters. Uh, he is doing the point of sale well and septic inspection that, you are not, that is now mandatory in three of the four counties in the Greater Lansing area, including Ingham, Eaton, and um, Shiawassee. Nate, can you explain a little bit about what needs to be done and how that law works? Well, we're here today to determine the performance of the water system and the sewage disposal system at this private single family dwelling. Uh, the local ordinances in those three counties require, in fact, all transactions are prohibited until these inspections are done. And uh, we're here today to check out the water system and the sewage system and their uh, conformance levels, their performance, and it starts by running a bunch of water. So we're going to go around the house and we're going to run all the water in the house like a kindergarten kid and just turn on everything we can. So we'll pick this up probably when we get in the basement, okay? Can you give me a little bit of a, on what the process is? You're doing your inspection today, so then what happens next? Um, we're going to turn the water into the laboratory. We're going to pump the septic tanks, uh, typically. Anyway, I'll just give you the general, uh, typical uh, scenario. And then if the water samples come back good, we're going to develop a report to submit to the county health department in all cases. Some online, Eaton County is an online submission. Ingham County and Shiawassee County are both still hard copy by paper mail. And uh, I'd like to thank the seller here today for allowing us to take the time to uh, make this video and uh, carry on like we are. But I hope you guys, I'm glad you guys are watching this. Jeff is proactive enough to put this kind of stuff online to give you a little bit of a, even a, be it a crazy feel for what it's like to be out here doing a well and septic. So I commend Jeff for at least getting something out there. It should be fun, I hope. Well, one, um, one last question, if we could. How, if the septic tank, you said it doesn't need to be pumped all the time. When does it have to have been pumped mo late, the latest time in order not to be pumped again now? I'm going to say in all counties that's basically three years. So if it's been pumped within the last three years and the seller has a paid receipt and a septic tank inspection letter yep. from the pumper, then they don't need to do it again. Yep, it's called a septic tank maintenance report, and it's basically uniform in all counties. You've got to produce that document. Well, I appreciate it, Nate, and we'll roll around and catch you doing a couple of your uh, portions of the inspection. We're going to head to the bathrooms and the laundry and uh, start the water running, so we'll pick we it up are, in there. We uh, in the bathroom of the home. In fact, this is just the first stop, and we're going to not dwell here long, but you can see that we just turn on everything we possibly can. We're going to plug the toilet. Uh, we're going to go for a maximum torture session on this uh, drain field to make sure we run several hundred gallons. Okay, next. All right, here we are. We're, we're down in the dungeon, and we are in the water pumping center. Uh, this is the basically the water tower for the home. This is an older style tank, but we're going to check water pressure and do a, a water volume and pressure check right now and see what kind of uh, oomph this thing has. I can't uh, reveal all of my inspection secrets because some of my competition might see this. Okay, well, we might want to do some borings. Well, we're back outside now and we're identifying other features around the house. And uh, here's something that's noteworthy on most sites, a buried fuel oil tank. Hmm, all right, well, we're gonna check and see how far away it is from the well and uh, make some other determinations. But we're gonna be out here today uh, looking for the septic tank and finding the drain field and uh, doing some soil borings and taking a look at the condition of the entire system and its location and making some drawings and doing all the fun stuff that the county requires. Did you have any specific questions, sir? I don't. Um, I think that actually covers the next step pretty well. All right, well, we're gonna, we'll catch up to you guys when we're uh, digging up some stone out of the system or something, looking at dirt. That'll be oh, fun. We're, we have no physical evidence of where the septic tank or where the drain field are. So we're doing like, you used to play the game Battleship. We're poking holes till we hit something and if you can hear this, I'm hitting into the stone of the drain field. So we're putting little marks on the ground and we're trying to track this thing, seeing which way it goes. And I've reached the end of the line here, but you can imagine doing this in January or February. I'm glad I don't do your job, Nate. Anyway, we're gonna do some borings and pull some stone out of here in a few minutes, so we'll be right we're back. back. We're back here with Nathan again. He's about ready to drill, or actually bore a couple holes to look at the stone in the drain field. Can you show us what you've been doing with uh, drawing um, sure. the layout? Let's get a close sure, up here's, of that. Uh, 
here's the, what we've been kind of up to, and of course this is different. Make the outlie of the house and a footprint, show the septic tank and the drain field trenches and the well, and we'll put the fuel tank on and all that good stuff. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna pick a couple of spots and we're gonna drill some holes in these trenches and pull the stone and soil up out of the trench to see what condition they're in. And these are the highly space age tools that I use. This is a soil auger. You know, Nate, as long as you put him with these, it makes a big difference. Huh? I've known you forever, and I don't know if you go a buck fifty anymore yet. You still can put that probe in the ground. That's right, man. Here's the probe. We found the trench. Uh, we marked the spot, and we'll start digging. Uh, but I lost the spot. So there it is, right there. Still hear that stone. So we will carefully. We'll do what I call a, a Williamston hole. We got to be very neat here in this community, so we make sure we don't damage the lawn without saving the divot. So there's the divot, and we're gonna spin the auger down in here, and what we're looking at is a couple of things. I'm gonna try to get an idea of what the soil is like as I go down, and this has got some clay in it and a little bit of sand in it, so it's kind of a mixture. Kind of a loam. Yeah, alone. Very good, Jeff. And we're going to go down quickly here. And basically, I just keep going. I've got to go down a couple of feet here. And I'm going to pull up some stone. So we'll let you go until I get down to the stone because this will be quite boring, okay? <laughs> no problem. Okay. We're back now. We're getting to the stone. And, and we're here. And we're, we're doing a close up mostly just for the sound effect so you can hear what it sounds when they're hitting the stone. Okay, we're gonna pull some of this up out of here now and hopefully it will just look like stone and it won't be all gross and full of sludge. So here comes the judge. And we look at this and this is the stone out of the system. Although there's a little bit of organic material and some you know, age showing, this home was built in 1967. So the drain field's been in well, for older than most of you are listening to this, not older than me, but stone still looks good. There's no liquid, there's no sludge in it. It looks like uh, just dirty stone out of the hole. So we're gonna see what level that occurred at. So the stone is about 30 inches deep down here. So this, this is a good test right here. Yes, we're passing this and it's a little bit deep in the hill. And Mr. Hahn doesn't like that very much, but he'll like it now. Okay, that's great. Yep. Uh, well, I don't on me. This is the last step. No, I meant white light. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> a little three stooges here. This yeah. is the last step of the uh, where we take the actual water samples that get sent into a lab. And if uh, Nathan, are you looking for what in this area? Arsenic, nitrates, coliform, and that's it. That's it. Okay. It. Yeah, in Ingham County, bacteria, nitrate, and arsenic is it. We've got all the water in the house running still. The faucet's right here, basically. Basically, if I can, I like to go ahead and prep it with heat. If you remember your microbiology class, when you flame the loop, you kill off any live bacteria. So what I do whenever possible is heat that sampling orifice wherever we're going to take the sample from. We're going to heat that thing up, make sure that it's just boiling and popping. There's no chance of any bacteria to be supported by scrambled eggs or whatever the cat may have done when they were up here licking the faucet or whatever the case may be. Okay, try not to catch the curtains on fire when curtains are present. We're gonna get that going and take a nice draw here right off the edge, this is our back deep. All the bottles are the same. They uh, are used at a sterile, sterile bottles are used at a medical laboratory for various types of samples. I'm sure you've had experience with this type of container, but we use them for water. And back tea is actually... Bacteria. Yeah, when okay. you're looking for coliform, it's just present whenever there's bacteria, so they actually test for coliform, do they yeah. not? Yes, they do. If bacteria are detected at all, they're looking for a specific type of coliform, E. coli, and we don't want them to find those, even if they find regular guys. But so there's the nitrate, the arsenic, and the bacteria. We're going to send those into a couple different labs and get the results back as quickly as we can and close this puppy. That's what we're after. A successful well and septic inspection. Let's get them closed.